Hey, it's 28 millimeter RPG, Rick here. And uh, today we're going to be going over some kind of like a tutorial for everybody out there. Uh, I seen that there was a few comments on our Centauri Traveler roleplay session. And uh, some of them, especially from David, David was uh, inquiring um, about the AI and and all the stuff that I've been using. And uh, I don't know, he, he looked at it and I guess he thought it was probably a year in the making or something like that. But uh, no, actually, um, I came up with the idea to do a game with the guys we were all talking about doing different 4D type roleplay stuff. And uh, we decided, OK, well, we're all going to go ahead and make us a, a session. And we're going to put like a maximum effort into our role play. And I thought, OK, as a game master, I also want to up my game a little bit, too, in this one and, uh, you know, increase the production value a little bit. So um, I decided to go ahead and start using the AI. So I wanted to get some images in order to kind of get the the setting of the the full visual effect uh, across on the players and uh, I mean if you I mean you could go totally you know theater of the mind and all that stuff but if you want to have uh, like a particular style to that setting uh, you're probably going to want to maybe help get a bit of help with that with the AI because uh, if you look for images on the internet for something that you need for your game, you might not find it, especially if you're looking for something that is influenced heavily by a particular artist that you're fond of. Uh, say uh, Jean Girard uh, from uh, Mobius. He he was a particular type of, of artist in the... You know, in, in the 70s and 80s. And he influenced a lot of movie makers. Uh, and, and a lot of movies that we see today. And uh, his style is, is very unique. Same with Sid Mead. And uh, Sid Mead was uh, the prompt that I used in my images. So I wanted to go over some of the techniques that I use in order to make these images and get them going pretty fast. I am using uh, mid journey. I use a, uh, a purchase purchased, uh, subscription to it because I do use it quite a bit as you may have noticed on my channel. And the thing is with mid journey, you have to run it through, uh, discord in order to uh, get, you know, in order to generate your, your images. So <clears throat> when, when a lot of people get mid journey uh, going, they'll usually just have a, uh, like you'll see up in the corner here, I'll bring my cursor over so you can see uh, this up here is mid journey bot. You'll, you'll see that actually when you first start up in, in any kind of general, um, It'll be your friend, basically. It, it, journey bot, mid journey bot becomes your friend, and you have to invite your friend into the particular server that you want him uh, want him to be entered into. In this case, I'm I'm the only person, other than mid journey here, almost knocked over my drink. Uh, so there's me. Uh, I've, I'm in the server. My server is like, you know, it's one of my private ones where it's just me and I just generate images here to, in order to, uh, make things for my, you know, my, my gaming buddy. So uh, this is, uh, this is what I do. So I've, I've learned some techniques here in, in helping me get exactly what I want. Now, um, in particular, with working with something that's stylized, like you want it to be a, a Mobius image or a Sid Mead type image, they have a particular style to them. So you 
you don't really have to add anything to to their like for instance there there are certain kind of images that you can get there's there's like photo photo realistic there's going to be stuff which is you know more or less like paintings stuff like that or drawings illustrations in the particulars of a particular art style say from the artists of Sid Mead you're going to get a particular type of um artwork that is more like a concept or kind of thing so you might have to add a few extra descriptors in there uh, prompts in order to get it to be more tightened up and looking more like a photo or something like that um in the case of mobius you might like the cartoony style of mobius and you will, you know, just leave it be. You could add to the prompt the description, you know, cartoon or, you know, illustration. I find it more, um, more, it's better to use illustration. So if you're using someone that uses painting, like, uh, say, Frazetta, Frank Frazetta, then I would use, you know, painting it if you really wanted to you could pull it out because the ai already knows the particular styles are going to be painting like or illustration like or you know concept art like so it depends on what you're looking for in this case i was going for and i'm showing you the artwork here that i've i've, I've garnished by uh creating it for centauri this one, I had to go ahead and use some extra prompts to it. So I added some uh, extra things like hyper detailed, as you can see here uh, that I've highlighted. So hyper hyper detail does help you quite a bit in refining it a little bit more, giving it more detail than what would normally come out on a piece of concept art. Um, now, <clears throat> when you, when you get your, your mid journey all set up and everything, you've got your, your robot invited to your server, uh, in this case, mid journey bot here, you will want to go ahead and make sure you, you set up settings. So, uh, if you hit the forward slash, as you see, I have done here on the very bottom, yeah, uh, forward slash will give you pretty much all the things that you can bring up on this, on your kind of like a control panel here. So we will bring up settings first and hit enter in order to bring that up fully. And you will see all the options. Your options will be different depending on which version of mid journey you're using. Uh, in, K in, in this, just so you get the context of, of, of how this works. If you run mid journey straight off without telling it to go into relax mode here, right here on the, uh, on the screen. Um, if you don't tell it to do that, it's going to be using up your credits and your credits is kind of like the, you know, the, the money that you use in order to, uh, make images. Now, if you're in relax mode, it will allow you to use the mid journey processes at a slower rate. So it, it won't be as fast, but it's not using up your credits. And that's the main thing. If you're search, searching something out, trying different things out, trial and error, that sort of thing, use use relax mode because otherwise you're going to be using up all your credits real fast. And all of a sudden you've got nothing left and and you'll be paying a little bit more in order to get more credits. So I always go ahead and put it on relax mode. Even if I'm doing refined or finished, uh, like upscaling and stuff like that, I'll still use relax mode. However, I will use fast mode on here, or maybe I'll even use turbo mode as well to show you the differences. 
but you got to make sure that everything here is kind of proper. You can kind of take notes of how I've got mine set up over here. You can you can choose which which model you want to use. Um, I'm using the latest test model, and uh, it's it's running fine. This is what I used to to uh, create all the images that I had have here. So make sure you are in relax mode. That is very 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 important. Otherwise. Like I say, you're going to be wasting a lot of your money uh, in what you invest in, in mid journey. So a relaxed mode, a much slower process. It it, it works, but, uh, you know, slower. Now that we've got that kind of figured out here, I you want to have an idea of what you want in your, in your image. And... Uh, Say for the sake, we're going to keep on using Sid Mead here because I've already got uh, all my images here made by Sid Mead. Well, made in the context of Sid Mead, <laughs> not exact, not done by Sid Mead, but uh, utilizing his his you know illustration prowess and the uh, the way Mid Journey does an artistic representation is is quite well developed if you used um if you use stable diffusion the thing is stable diffusion does things really well on the individuals on the subject so if you're if you're creating uh something that is that that you know you're you're creating a, an image of a person or something like that. It's really good at re, re recreating that person's you know visuals. The thing is, everything around it, behind it, it won't be artistically in context. It, Mid Journey is way superior in that. So that's the reason why I use Mid Journey a lot more than I do with Stable Diffusion. Stable Diffusion is free, but you have to have a very high, uh, a very good graphics card. So without your uh, high GPU, uh, you're going to have a, a, a rougher time uh, making images it's going to take a long time to generate uh, i have a 4090 so i i have no problems uh like generating images in in uh, stable diffusion and i see my uh because i'm using because <laughs> i'm using discord you're going to be hearing that uh bloop bloop all the time so um keep that in mind as we're doing this i have a lot of people on my discord so so let's let's get into the int uh, the idea of what you want to do here with uh, with uh, you know your mid journey. You want to create images that you can get across quite quickly to your players. That this is the thing that they see. You don't have to add any more context to it in the game. Uh, you want them to from then on visualize everything in that kind of. Uh, stylistic form so let's say we want to make a a city and let's say you really like this orange and and white um you know kind of flavor to to it you want the city to have that flavor as well well you see i have these links in here which um i'll kind of give you a, a rundown on on how that works you have these little links in here which are actually an uploaded image which i have uh, uploaded in here so if i was to go ahead and click on this it'll it'll pop up a a window on the side here in my browser and of course i will drag it over here so you can take a look at exactly what that image is and uh let me go ahead and bring that down and scoot it over so it's using this as a reference image and you can see this is something that i had generated i was uh if if you look at the um the prompt up here you can read your prompt 
actually in the image information here. So in this case, I was doing a computer interface and I used Sid Mead as the, as the artist for that computer interface. I'll show you how you can upload that into here. So, um, for instance, let me go ahead and bring up my images. Okay, bring up images. And let's say I want to use, a, maybe we'll use a different image this time, okay? Let's go ahead and drag and drop something in here that would work really well in creating something that would look cool. We'll, we'll, we'll say, for instance, we'll just go ahead and grab an image of one of the weapons here. We don't want too much orange. We want more maybe silvery white in there. So I'll grab something that's a little bit more like that. And here we go. I'll just go ahead and click the enter and it uploads the image here. So we want our, we want our city created by Sid Mead in the style of Sid Mead. Kind of in the same kind of stylized look as this. So this is, of course, is a weapon, but what it's going to do is take a look at the shapes and everything and start utilizing those a little bit more in how it's going to create the city. So the way we do this is I will take... For instance, one of these already created prompts, go ahead and copy and paste it in here. Um, so you can kind of, kind of see how to work on it. Uh, this won't work because as soon as I hit enter it, it what, what it'll do is it'll just go bloop, plop it in there as if I did a, a, an actual uh, text. I'll, I'll actually do that just so you can see. Doink and <coughs> We only see that uh, it's it's got the got the image in there from from our previous um, iteration here. So it pulls this information up and drops it in here as a as an image. <coughs> pretty pretty simple. But what we want to do is we're, we want to create this into a prompt that we can that we can use and we can modify a bit here. So what we do is we go ahead and type in our imagine prompt. This is very important. This is part of what uh, makes this uh, mid journey work. And in this prompt, we can go ahead and uh, just paste that in there. So it's the same, same thing, same, uh, same query to the image. That's here. We want it to query this image though. So let's go ahead and, and take that out. So we pulled out this uh, this prompt out of here in our in our uh, this uh, link in our prompt. And let's go up to here. <coughs> we'll click on that. <coughs> now we will go ahead and, and uh, right click on that and copy the link from this. So now that we have that in our uh, copy. We will paste it in there. Doink. Now you see it's a really, really long, lengthy um, link. So we're going to have to go ahead and uh, reduce that a little bit. So what we do, backspace it all the way to the PNG. Get rid of all this size information and stuff like that. The extension and all this. There we go. We have one space. Double check to see if it's just one space. Because you don't want extra spaces in there and stuff like that. And let's go ahead and we'll change this prompt. Instead of saying the high tech state room. We want to say. <coughs> um, massive. Uh, super. And we're going to put a dash. City. Okay, and make sure you separate that from the uh, from the link. So our link is separated by a space on each side. So it's a massive super city, and then it gives you the link of um, let's say. 
Now, this part here, we want to go ahead. This is this is indicating what the background is of this uh, of this topic. We want to go ahead and add uh, city uh, cityscape like so. Cityscape. Uh, we can go, we can give it, say, a uh, rainy sky, rainy, dark, rainy. Let's go dark, uh, rainy, uh, I think that should work, rainy. And we'll keep the uh, the utility interesting, hyper detailed in the style of artist Sid Mead. This part here, the A R the the dash dash A R space sixteen by nine. Uh, so it's sixteen colon nine. That is the aspect ratio of this image. You can go ahead and increase that or decrease that. You can make uh, the the width come down and the you know height go up and down just by using these ratios. We will keep this ratio because uh, well, actually, let's do let's do something different. Let's go instead of AR sixteen by nine, we'll go AR four. Uh, colon two four by two so it's going to be extra wide it's going to be uh super you know super wide kind of cinematic kind of a uh, kind of a, of a look um another th prompt we can put in here we could say cinematic as well uh instead of utility let's see cinematic Is that correct that should work you don't necessarily have to separate everything in commas down here. It's totally fine. So anyways, we have the prompt in there. We have our link in there as a reference. And let's go ahead and run it. So let's hit uh, the little forward arrow here. Now, this, I'll leave this run real time so you can you can understand what, what the difference in how long it takes for it to create an image in relax mode. Now this will also depend on who's all using Midjourney at the time. If it's a busy time, you're gonna find that it's not gonna create it as quickly as this. Uh, usually later on in the night, it, it can it can be uh, quite a bit more of a uh, hassle trying to <laughs> trying to get an image uh, done properly within a reasonable uh, amount of time. So let's see what it's creating here. So here you're seeing it's taking the original, this, this image that I had dropped in, this one here, and it's creating a city in that kind of a shape, utilizing the shapes. Like I said, th this highly influences how your image is going to look. Okay. So in this case, it's taking this item and it looks like it's creating it to become some form of a, like a transport or something. And uh, you can see everything in the background. If we go ahead and click on this, it'll bring it up in a little bit bigger uh, mode. If we go open in browser, I'll show you what happens here. We'll bring this over in the browser. You can see what how this works. We'll go ahead and, and um, bring it in. A little closer so you can see and we'll span it out so you can get a good idea of how this is going to look and you can see it's not quite not quite doing the city thing as well as you'd want it to go ahead and scooch it across here you can see it's it's got different kinds of ideas of what it thinks you want here it's giving the reflection, which is which was shown on that image. The reflection here is showing up on the uh, on the ground here as kind of like it's in, in a. It's it kind of looks like a ship that's on on the surface in front of the water kind of idea. And these kind of look like docks and stuff like that. It's it's quite an interesting looking image. This one's more space like. 
uh, by the looks of it. Uh, pretty cool looking stuff. This would make a really great kind of a, a spaceship or something like that. And we go over here and this one uh, seems to be more like a more like a ship almost in front of a city. So you can see how that is is influencing things. Now, let me get this out of the way. Whoop. And let's get out of here. So you can see how this influences that to create something rather cool and unusual. Let's uh let's for instance uh look at uh some cityscapes that I've already already created. So we go into let's see, is it in the rumpus here? The rumpus will go uh, this is the uh, image which I've created for the uh for this current video. And we will go up and take a look. Let's see, do I have things in the Traveler game here that I could pop up instead? We will, you see, I have done a lot of images and picked out only certain aspects of each image in order to bring it in. Um, this does take a bit of a process to uh, create these images, to, to weed them out and figure out which ones are the best to use. And uh, there's also some really cool tricks you can use here as well to um, enhance your, your images. You see, I'm, I'm not seeing anything here that's, that's gonna work very well here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take this once again, we're going to copy it all the way to the AR uh, four by two. We're going to not include this S. This is a style uh, prompt on the end of two fifty, so it's it's not uh, you you can you can adjust this. You can add this yourself. You can you can say it's it's five hundred, but usually you do that in the settings. It works better that way. Let's uh, go ahead and copy this. So copy, go ahead and hit that prompt again. Uh, do the back of uh, the forward slash I. Go ahead and bring up the prompt and go paste that in. But this time, let's uh, let's use uh, this this link instead. So let's go ahead and copy, and we will replace our previous link and go paste doink like that here we go let's run it with this as our prompt image um, for it to garnish some form of an idea of what we want to see our city looking like Now this one's starting to pop up pretty interesting. So you can kind of see what we had here and what we're getting in this image is being directly influenced. Some pretty cool stuff there. So let's go ahead and bring this up and take a look. So as you can see, there's some pretty cool looking images here. And let's say, for example, you want something different than what's in the center here. Say, for instance, you like what you see in this one. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at this, the way that they have these uh, labeled. One, two, three, four. So we want to up the second one. So one, two, so the second one right here up. The V down here is to vary. You can you can vary from this. You can also do it by bringing, uh, uh, by up, uh, upping it here uh, into its own singular image. And you have a lot of new prompts here. You can see that there wasn't any on this one. There's a whole bunch of new prompts here that you can use 
these buttons will do different things. Now we can upscale this as, as you see it, uh, but we want to change this a little bit. So let's do something different here. We want to instead maybe get rid of this chunky looking thing and put more city in here. So what we do is we'll do a very region. And let's go ahead and hit that. Now with very region, you can go ahead and take your lasso tool. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lasso this whole area right here. Do, do, do. Like so. And make sure you get everything on that. You can go ahead and add, there we go. We'll add that edge into there. And now you can run the prompt, but you can also get rid of stuff here. Say you don't want to use that image anymore. And you just want to do the remainder as being the cityscape, dark, rainy, cinematic, blah, 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 like it is here. Now we'll go ahead and run it. Now I've, I've done this quite a bit where you can totally change that prompt in order to recreate what's in that area. If I wanted a, like a robot in there, I could have typed robot, blah, 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 and it'll put in a robot in that shape. Now it's taking what it has looked at previously and it's gonna go ahead and start creating uh, stuff in there in order to fill it in as it sees fit. Now, sometimes it can get a, a quite quite crazy here on, on some of it. As you see, it's got a, uh, we have a bike, we have a car, <laughs> we have something exploding, and we also have a, a cool looking building. I, I'm more partial to the cool looking building that's in this one. So we'll see what it brings up here, for, for instance. Now, you, you're going to be going through a whole lot of different iterations yourself discovering what works, what doesn't work here. So as soon as it's done here, let's go ahead and take a look at the results. Well, we have uh, what well, look, looks like a uh, exploding uh, city here and all kinds of stuff going on. This one's more or less like some sort of uh, strange looking uh, citadel in the middle of the city, which looks pretty cool, uh, which is neat. Uh, I think I'm kind of partial to that right here. So let's go ahead and up the number one here and take a look at it. Now, this looks kind of cool and it's got a lot of people coming in and stuff like that. But say for instance, eh, it's not looking quite right. We like the idea. Let's go ahead and vary it a little bit. So away we go. Keep on going with the variation. Now this may change it entirely because now we aren't hinged on the previous prompt, but we are using the seed of this picture. So it will continue to look the same, except it's gonna be slightly varied from the previous iteration of it. There we go. This is starting to look more, more like it's put together, like it looks like it's more natural to the scene. Let's take a look at what we've got here. So we've got tons of people coming in. It seems like they're walking towards this big, crazy looking citadel. That looks pretty cool. That looks uh, pretty, pretty decent. There's some pretty cool looking things in here. Let's go ahead and we'll 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 take we'll take this one up here, the, this uh, top corner one, number one. We'll bring it up, and in order for you to get a really good uh, render of this, I'm going to open this one up in, in the browser so you can see how big this one is. This um, can be blown up, and it's not that big. It's not that much bigger than the original picture that you that I had brought up before here so um, let's go ahead and make it upscale it by two so we can hit that but what we can do go back into your settings 
and hit enter in order to bring them up. And let's go into uh, fast mode. And it tells you that you're done. You're going to be on fast mode. It's going to go ahead and use your uh, use your credits. So let's go ahead and fast fast mode this upscale. Because uh, upscaling usually takes quite a bit more time. Because it's got to go ahead and take that picture, analyze it, make it bigger, add more detail, that sort of stuff. So we'll let this uh, run and you can see how long a, just a fast upscale would, uh, would be at times two. Times two is pretty good. It'll give you enough detail in order for you to put it together in like a PDF. Um, if you watch the video on, uh, on our last live stream, the, uh, Traveler game, Centauri, uh, I am using a, what I did was I put together a slideshow in Google. Uh, so if you go into your Google drive and you go ahead and put together a presentation, what StreamYard does is it takes that it will allow you to take that presentation and add it as a slideshow so it will ask you to look at your google docs and it'll brood it in it'll it'll upload your presentation into Streamyard, and uh, then you can use it in there and you can use your arrow keys left and right in order to uh, switch from scene to scene Keep in mind that uh, if you also are sharing, for instance, some some of the some of the Streamyard uh, functions allow you to have other people use the same Streamyard. So if you have that person in your group, he's playing with you, and he hits the left and right button, he's going to be able to go ahead and move your. <laughs> slides from one side to the other so make sure you you know the limitations there i would probably use it next time uh just using a uh, just uh bringing up my own images through like uh firefox or something like that or uh through a foxit reader like like something like that you use adobe uh reader to read it as a pdf and then, you know, go from slide to slide that way. You can do that. You can see uh, how quickly that rendered. Believe me, it would have taken a really, 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 really long time for it to do this upscale. So let's take a look at it. Very nice. Let's go ahead and open in the browser once again. And you can see the difference here between the two. So this is the original. Okay, this is the maximum size of the original. So you can see there isn't much difference from when I zoom in and out. Now we go to the new image, and when you zoom in, you can see it is uh, quite a bit more detail. And uh, the uh, uh, it's it's yeah, it's showing the rainy sky, you know, like I was telling it to do and everything. And it's showing you the city in the background. Looks wonderful. Looks like they're all ready to have a gala in the, in the center over here. It's like a, a big meeting. It, you can you can do you can do different iterations. You can keep on uh, re bringing up. You know, and uh, let's say, okay, maybe I want to do a subtle version of this instead or a very strong version of this. Keep in mind, I'm on fast mode, so you're going to see a big difference in speed this time of how long it takes this to start making uh, making my images. And it's pretty much right away. Remember, just a little while ago, we were like waiting a little bit of time before it started bringing up these images. So I do this continuously until I start seeing images that I really want to start working on more and refining it. I don't take the very first image that like like we had just seen here and uh, and start start working on something right away. I start churning out images in order to see what this thing can can bring out, what looks really cool uh, and breathtaking 
for my for my players to see. There is some incredibly awesome images right here that uh, simply would just blow people away right now. So don't always take the first thing. <laughs> like you know, save your save your save your credits for for something really good. So there we go. Now these these are very uh, these are super nice. I really like some of these things. Let's um Yeah, we could uh wow, there's uh, I don't know which one to pick. We'll just pick the one that looks kind of like Disneyland over here. <laughs> Let's go up four and uh bring it up. Yeah, I'm I'm doing this all in fast mode right now for you guys so so you can see and uh you know if if you don't like certain things in here you can once again go into the very region like here and you can pick the things that you want to go ahead and you, you got this you can have the square rectangle tool or you can use the uh this uh um lasso say you don't like the way this shape is working out on them that as well now also keep in mind every time you do this it will sometimes generate something totally separate for each one of these images, so it may not uh, look correct. Sometimes you want to go ahead and link these images together like so, like that. Okay, so it's it's taking this as one full uh, new version of something in here. Otherwise, you might have a chicken in here and a car over here or something or a motorcycle here and uh, and and something else and exploding something over there. So let's go ahead and, and zap that and see what happens when we when we vary that spot. So I did this with uh, a number of the images. You could see like the view from the uh, from the Dagama which was the starship in the in the live stream and you can see that there was a, a another object in the background well i tried different ways of uh of doing this and this is where i discovered that if your windows are separated like three windows or two windows you need to connect them in order to get what's happening in the bottom view of the windows and then you had the separator and then the upper window. You'll have two different images going on in those. And it, sometimes it does some really weird stuff. So um, sometimes the best way to remedy something like that is you just cut out the windows in a uh, in some sort of Photoshop or whatever you may have. And uh, and enter in the thing that you want in the backdrop for you and then, you know, manipulate it so it, it looks proper. I had to do that with the uh with the scene of the of the massive uh structure that was outside of the ship and uh and situated and I did separate renders of the of the uh the large object from either side so it gave more of the impression of how large this uh, this uh this object was in space. So now we have all these images Let's take a look at how it remedied the uh, little blobs there. And in this case, these all look really good. There's no uh, screaming chickens in there or anything like that. This looks great. Let's go ahead and up one of these. Let's up uh, the fourth one here. <coughs> and we can go ahead and upscale that. And we have ourselves a complete image by doing so, like so. And this will take a little bit to do. But uh, another thing I want to show you as well here is going to be using AI in uh, bringing up some ideas for your game as well. Now, when I created the uh, pregens for Centauri, uh, keep in mind the players didn't have any um, any input because we were doing a 4D. We, we wanted players to step out of their comfort zones and play something a little different. So 
what you would what what I did was I gave them all a, a choice. I, I did an image with the skills like you had seen on, on the in the in the video. And that's all the information they got was their name and their skill set. So I had them choose which one they wanted to pick. They did so. And then for each of them, I went ahead and um, rendered out with the AI an idea behind what how these characters were supposed to um, be. Their background, uh, a little bit uh, like a... Uh, here we go. There we are. So how I save these, I mean, you could go ahead and right click and go save image like so. I usually just go into the browser right here. There we are. We got the picture here. We could zoom in if you wanted to. There's like literally thousands of people here. <laughs> and we can go ahead and save image as and it'll bring it into here. And save. You can see all the images that I had in here for uh, different things that I had for the game. Some other things for uh, like the target that I had to superimpose on the uh, <laughs> on the uh, image of the relic. Uh, all kinds of stuff in here, even stuff that nobody should be looking at right now, but uh, it's in there. And I can go ahead and hit save. I can call it what I want. I'll call this. Super City. There we go. And save Oop, as a PNG file. PNG files are awesome. There we go. <clears throat> now let's get rid of this. And let's bring this back here because uh, I'm going to be using Aria here. Aria is pretty cool. If you use uh, Opera, let's see if we get this in the in the right space here opera let's go aria aria's right here on your on your opera browser aria we bring it up you can see we got all kinds of different things you know uh that i had been asking it so let's uh some of the things that i had here let's go ahead and open up the previous one i want to see um there we go so the thing with AI is AI needs AI needs an example to follow. So here we go. This is this is what I wrote in here as a prompt for this. So what I wanted is I wanted each of the characters to have like their own personal profile. I wanted them to have some secrets. I also wanted them to have a weakness and that's pretty much it. So by using this as my example, so I gave it some ideas of, of what, what, what a weakness would be like. Uh, so I use uh, this I, and I word it out properly so that it understands what, what's going on here. So I said, this example is a character profile for a sci-fi personality named John Walker. So then I go ahead and give do the colon here. And then below that, I add John Walker, personal profile. John is studious, determined, and full of energy. Then for a secret, it says, John secretly is part of a Russian mafia, and his main goal is to steal the secret plans to steal Starship. Then a weakness is John can't stand the sight of blood and will become queasy and faint whenever he encounters it. Now I put down below here an instruction. So with the with the last part of this, it's an instruction. So this is an example. So I said this example. Okay. Okay. Now I say under here, using the above example, create a random personal personality, profile, secret, and weakness for a character named blah, blah, blah. In this case, this, in this case, it's Darren Collins, who is a space explorer in the year 2100. So once I hit that, it decided to chug out this. I didn't use this. I went ahead and re redid this 
several times in order to come up with a really cool kind of uh, background for Darren Collins. For instance, it started off by saying uh, Darren Collins is adventurous, curious, and has a strong sense of responsibility. He is resourceful, adaptable, and a sharp, sharp wit. Uh, secret, he secretly harbors doubts of his true intentions of his intergalactic council and is conducting his own investigation. Totally okay, but I wanted something a little bit better. So you keep on running these through until you see something that comes up pretty cool. Now, I have uh, I did one for each of the different characters here. So you can kind of see their, their kind of secrets and stuff like that. But uh, I believe it's probably a little too small to read everything there. But you have to keep on rendering these things over and over. So let's go ahead and grab the, the example. I'll, I'll just grab this example and go copy. And uh, we'll bring it all the way down to the bottom here. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here and run it again. This is, once again, doing one for uh, the cap. Uh, this is... Uh, this is the one that we we're doing for Darren Collins again. This is a totally different one. And you can see every time it starts doing um, like you redo, 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 it'll start refining it a little bit better because it's understanding that you may need a little bit more details or something each time. So you always use this in the context that you're you're not quite sure what you want so you ask the AI to kind of fill in the blanks for you. And and sometimes, you know, it can do some really good things. You can do something like um, tell it to uh, create a monster for you. And in the case you want the monster to have a certain look, you know, uh, you'll have a description. So you give an example of the description of the monster. You'll have maybe some... Uh, different attacks that it uses so then you go ahead and give an example of the different attacks that you would particularly see on a certain said monster and say for example an environment that it lives in and then you go ahead and give an example of what the environment is then you go ahead and give it the context of how you want it to proceed with an instruction and you tell it create the Zephyr Max, or whatever you want to call the creature. Creature named the Thuggeroid. And give it a, a description and blah, blah, blah. All the things that you had listed above it. And it will take that context and start writing it out for you. In this case here, we uh, got a profile for Darren Collins. And it says, uh, Darren Collins is a stalwart and cunning space explorer, renowned for his unwavering determination, strategic thinking, and ability to lead his crew to the un uncharted territories of space with precision and expertise. He exudes a commanding presence, possesses a sharp intuition, and is known for his resolute nature, often inspiring his crew members with his decisive actions and steadfast leadership. His secret... He harbors the clandestine mission to uncover the truth behind a series of unexplained celestial phenomena and has been re covertly gathering information to solve the mysteries that he uh, that have eluded conventional scientific understanding, hoping to make a scientific discovery that could reshape humanity's perception of the cosmos. And his weakness is, despite his formal leadership skills, Darren battles a fear of betrayal. Now this is kind of this is taking uh, um, um, this is taking a bit of what I had used on my well, last uh, iteration of Darren Collins. So it's it's fear of betrayal, which we kind of explained in the in the end of the video. We were talking about some of their some of their flaws and and weaknesses and stuff like that, which was pretty interesting, and how they would portray them in in the game. So. Um, it, it's kind of doing doing this and this uh, fear of betrayal is rooted in the past experience of being deceived during an earlier space mission, which occasionally leads to moments of guardedness, guard, guardedness, guardedness and suspicion, even when confronted with ambu ambiguous in situations or unfamiliar ent entities in the depths of space. So 
Um, interesting, interesting stuff. Uh, I usually go ahead and take this and I go ahead and modify a few other things. So I go ahead and copy it. Uh, you can also do the, let's, 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 uh, let's rephrase that or whatever. You can do all kinds of things with, with Aria. Aria is free. Of course you got, you, you got to uh, uh, sign yourself up for it, uh, through, uh, through the opera and, uh, and you, you can use this just as well as chat GPT. It doesn't cost you a thing. Uh, I also use ChatGPT. I've tried using that a few times. It's it's pretty interesting. It comes up with just just as good things as this does. So um, Aria Aria's got my thumbs up. Uh, if you're if you're into using the Opera browser, it's it's free. So there you go. Not sure what else I could add to this video, so I'm I'm kind of just gonna go ahead and leave it there. That uh, <clears throat> just to just to kind of give you an idea of of how easy it is to to create stuff. It did <coughs> getting a dry dry throat here, um, and we're drinking mug root beer today instead of the usual uh, Dr Pepper. No caffeine. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more idea of how easy it is to, to use AI to kind of enhance the experience of your players, giving backdrops and stuff. It will make maps and stuff like that as well, like these images and, and everything. I, I can make maps, but I don't, I don't use maps, so... And, and the maps seem to be a little weird sometimes. You can go ahead and uh, prompt it to use something like maybe Dyson logos or something like that and, and come up with a few cool ideas using using his style. Or, or uh, you know, if, if, you, if you have a particular artist that could possibly be known by the AI, it, it will it will pick up things. You can use examples, just the same. Uh, you can uh, if you have a particular style of map that you want to convey in this image, you can grab images of different. Like I would say, no more than three images. Drop them into Mid Journey, and then right click on each one, like we did, kind of just like this. Right click, uh, well, just click on it. Then right click on it and say copy the link, add it to your prompt and uh, do that for all three images. Make sure there's a space between each of the links. Uh, otherwise, it won't read it properly. You have to have each link individual in that prompt with a space between each one. And uh, it will go ahead and create something very, very similar to that image that you are referring to kind of just the same way as you've seen by these examples here. And then you can further, as you can see here, create and refine stuff. So it looks a little bit more natural and, and cohesive with the entire image. I hope this helps you guys out there in, in using AI in uh, your own games and stuff like that. Um, in, in my case, it was, uh, it was a lot of images in order to refine them enough to get the particular ones that I was looking for. In some cases, you can see some of the examples here, <clears throat> go to one where I had modified, uh, regions and stuff like that. Let's see. Um, Um, ah, here we go. I think we did a varied region on this one. So for, for, uh, let's see. No, not this one. Let's grab, I know which one this, this particular one here. So, uh, let's go back to the original of it. There we go. So this image here looked like a pretty good one for an airlock. Uh, but for instance, this was just a ship bulkhead door 
and Starship Interior. And that was basically about it. Utility, interesting. So what I did is I said, well, I didn't like these things in here. So when I hit the very region, it keeps all that information in there. It should have the spots that I had varied already. And you can see it, it keeps that information in there for you. So when you have that and you keep the same prompt in here, it will, it may add things in there that, uh, that, that you, that you may not want, or it will blend them in. And, uh, and that's particularly what it did was it, it started creating, uh, variations here. Let's go down. These are the variations that it came out with. So these are the images without those items in there. So it varied it. So it became basically an empty uh, airlock. And uh, and I just kept on going. I decided, oh, okay, I didn't like this. So I wanted to vary it. And I decided on creating images until it finally created one that looked like this. And this is the one that I used to upscale. And this is the upscale itself. And it's got a window here. It's got lights. It's It looks like an airlock, you know, and uh, the outer edges, Sid Mead style, looks awesome. And that's basically, the, you know, sure, you got to take a little time. You got to, you, you, you may have to manipulate some of these images a little bit. Um, it is an involved process. And if you're not ready to tackle it, it may take you some time to get used to knowing what to put in there for a prompt in the first place. So you may have to go ahead and watch a few videos like, you know, like this one or uh, uh, stuff from AR Entrepreneur or some, something like that. There's tons of channels out there that can help you with this kind of stuff and, uh, and start creating your own things. Remember, when you... Join Mid Journey first thing with the demo. It only gives you a limited amount of credits. Make sure you turn the settings to relax mode first so you can practice first. That was my first mistake was not knowing what the relax mode was. And I used up all my credits right away. So uh, so I ended up, you know, re-watching how this is being done. And then I realized, oh, yeah, I got to put it on relax mode. So and then I was able to, you know, create stuff to my heart's content. And uh, and that's 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 how I do it. Um, if I really need something fast, I'll go ahead and and put it on that turbo mode or the uh, fast mode. And uh, have stuff render out real fast, quickly for me. But uh, you know, save your save your money. Hit hit the relax mode, and and uh, and you'll be you'll be good, golden. You'll get to practice a lot, figure out what works, what doesn't work, and uh, and go from there. I hope that helps you out. And uh, yeah, that's all I can give you guys now for today. So uh, enjoy. Uh, if you, if you're not subscribed, subscribe. Um, I'm always learning things. Everybody that joins me in these conversations, games are also learning things too. And that's the whole idea behind here is become better and better at our craft, even if it's role playing and, uh, yeah, role playing is a skill. And, uh, if you're not developing your skill, you're just going to be all kind of the same. You're going to just be a 2D player for the rest of your life or even a 1D player for the rest of your life. Um, so if you like to improve what you're doing as a skill, do it. Become the best that you can be. All right. Talk to you guys hey, later. Since you made it this far to the video at the end, you may as well hit that subscribe button. Cause it's free honest it's free let's go ahead and hit it i'm learning stuff you are learning stuff we all learn together subscribe let's do it